Hey friends, Ash here with 10 cents. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the, I just dropped a pen, 10 most popular men's fragrances of 2018. I wanted to take a look at these 10 most popular men's releases from last year, because we're almost at the end of 2019, and it's kind of interesting to look back and see what were basically the most hyped releases of last year. So without further ado, let's jump into this top 10 most popular men's fragrances that were released in 2018. Before we jump into this top 10, I need to let you guys know how I came up with it. And it's basically the same way that I came up with my last video that was similar to this. And that is, this is the most popular fragrances according to Fragrantica. Now I fully realize that Fragrantica is not the world at large. It's basically a microcosm of the world and it's also mainly fragrance community guys that go on there and vote and put what they like and stuff like that. Still yet though, that's what we're going off of, so don't go on to Fragrantica right now and cheat. Just think of what you think the top 10 most popular men's releases were in 2018 and see if you're correct as I go through this list. First up at number 10, Hermes, Terre d'Hermes, O Intense Vetiver. Let me scoot over to the side so that I can put the stuff here. This one has lemon, Sichuan pepper, bergamot, and vetiver. What I find interesting about this one is that it was most popular enough in terms of receiving votes on Fragrantica to place it into the top 10. But I remember when this was released, people didn't seem to care all that much. One thing you'll notice with Terre d'Hermes O Intense Vetiver is that it doesn't have the orange note that you'll find in the other Terre d'Hermes fragrances which is one of the things that it's best well known for, or most well known for. Instead, this version opens up bright and citrusy with bergamot, grapefruit, and lemon. A little bit of Sichuan pepper and geranium work in early on, and then of course, there is the staple vetiver note that this line is known for. This one comes across a little bit cleaner than the original Terre d'Hermes does to my nose. It still has a small touch of earthiness, but it's just not as prominent as in the OG. This one has a little more of a green or fresh take on the vetiver that's used in O Intense Vetiver. And it goes without saying that this fragrance is basically for your vetiver lovers out there. So at number 10, Hermes Terre d'Hermes O Intense Vetiver, which to me was a little bit of a surprise, but not as big of a surprise as what's at number nine, which is a Zara fragrance. It is Zara Vibrant Leather. This one has notes of bergamot, bamboo, and leather, and this is sort of a re-release, which Zara does pretty often. Sometimes they'll take a fragrance, put it into a new bottle, give it a new name, and have it still be the exact same fragrance, and then people go buy it and they're like, wait, this is the same as that fragrance I bought two years ago that had a totally different name and bottle. In this circumstance, they kept the same name, just changed the bottle. I have the original Vibrant Leather from 2016 in the first bottle style instead of this different bottle style. And I've got to say that off my skin, it has always been a weak performer. Vibrant Leather, in case you're unaware, is a Zara clone of Aventus, Creed's Aventus. And I know you look at that no breakdown, leather, bamboo, and bergamot, and you're like, that doesn't sound like Aventus, but that's what they're doing here. So this one was apparently one of the most popular fragrances of all of last year. Though I do think that you're probably better off with a different clone than this one. I think that Club de Nuit Intense Man or Laventure for the cheap price is a little bit better. And I think if you wanted to, you could pay up a little bit and get something like Explorer by Mont Blanc and be better suited as well. Initially, it's a very bergamot heavy take on Aventus, but a lot of fragrances will do that. They'll go for an Aventus vibe, they'll just say no pineapple, and they'll go heavy on the bergamot. And Vibrant Leather dries down to a light woody and leather base. It smells good, it's very pleasant, it's easy to wear, it's versatile, it's just, it has subpar performance for me. Either way, that was number nine, Zara Vibrant Leather. Number eight is a fragrance that I really do enjoy, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum. This one has vanilla, tolu balsam, and orris as some of the notes. And a lot of people will kind of lump this in 
with the whole Dior Homme, Valentino Womo lines of fragrances. More specifically, Valentino Womo Intense and Dior Homme Intense. It does have a powdery iris with benzoin and it has a great vanilla kind of balsamic feeling to it. It is not quite as powdery as Dior Homme Intense or Valentino Womo Intense off of my skin and that makes it come across a little bit more masculine than those two fragrances. Not that there's anything wrong with those two because I love Valentino Womo Intense and Dior Homme Intense both. It's an awesome fall and wintertime fragrance and uh, I actually thought that I had done a standalone review on this fragrance, but apparently I never got around to doing that. So I'll probably try to tackle that sometime this coming winter. Number eight, Gentleman Eau de Parfum. Awesome fragrance. Number seven is a Giorgio Armani. And it's not really a surprise to find this in the top 10 because this is a flanker to one of the biggest lines of fragrances of all time. Actually, the best-selling men's fragrance of all time. Aqua de Jo, Absolute. Bergamot, Tonka, Woody Notes, C Notes. Some of the notes in the fragrance. There's a ton of fruit in the opening here. Bergamot, lemon, apple, pear, grapefruit. Just a whole bunch of stuff going on there. And this one also features C Notes, Tonka, and Amberwood. Amberwood is a note that is super popular nowadays in designer fragrances. Uh, I always say this, and I know you guys are probably getting sick of hearing it, but in case you're unaware, Amberwood is basically, in a very simple form, an Ambroxan type note that has more of a woody feeling to it, or a woody scent profile. So Amber, Ambroxan, Wood, Amberwood. Aqua de Jo Absolute gets compared to Paco Rabanne Invictus Aqua. And to an extent, Aqua de Jo Absolute is basically Armani taking that DNA and reworking it to fit in the Aqua de Jo line. It's an Ambroxany sweet aquatic fragrance that's very versatile and very appealing, especially to younger guys out there. It's not offensive and will probably have you smelling good to like 99% of people out there that are not hardcore into fragrances. So not a huge surprise to find this one in the top 10. Number seven, Aqua de Jo Absolute. Number six is Prada. Luna Rosa Black, which is a favorite of mine over the past couple years. It's one of my favorite designer releases that has come out in recent memory. It's got notes of Angelica, Amber, and Tonka as some of the main notes there. The Tonka and the Amber mixing together is what you're gonna pick up the most from this fragrance, though the Angelica does give it this slight herbal undertone. It's sweet, it's deep, it's smooth. To an extent, it reminds me of something like uh, bits and pieces from Bulgari Black, Van Cleef and Arpels Midnight in Paris, and even a little touch of Prada Luna Rosa Sport taken out and mixed together, and then you end up with Luna Rosa Black. It's sexy and rich. It's got a little touch of powder to it, but still is a mass appealing fragrance. And one of the things that's really nice about Luna Rosa Black is that for almost everybody out there, it's going to smell extremely unique. And I'm talking about your everyday man or woman out there because most people are not really aware of Bulgari Black or Midnight in Paris. So while you can draw some comparisons of those fragrances with Luna Rosa Black, most people have never smelled Bulgari Black. Most people have never smelled Midnight in Paris. So when they smell Luna Rosa Black, they're like, oh wow, that's really interesting. What is that? And I've had a lot of reactions like that while wearing Luna Rosa Black to gatherings, get-togethers, parties, whatever. So for me personally, that one's a big compliment puller and it's great for this time of year, fall and winter. Number five is an Azaro fragrance and it is Wanted by Night. Now it's kind of interesting to see that fragrance in the top five, but it is. A lot of times in the fragrance community, Wanted and Wanted by Night um, seem to kind of get pushed to the side, like redheaded stepchildren or something. But me personally, I prefer Wanted to Paco Rabanne Invictus, and I think that Wanted by Night is a really solid flanker as well. As cumin, tobacco, fruity notes, orange, and cinnamon as some of the main notes in the fragrance. And uh, one of the things that I remember most of Wanted by Night is actually my friend Chris, Mr. Siage, uh, who's passed away now, he and I talking about this fragrance and going back and forth on it. He was really excited when he smelled it before he reviewed it and he immediately reached out to me. So that's one of the things about this fragrance that kind of sticks out in my mind. If you're unaware of who Mr. Siage is, he was a fragrance YouTuber. Uh, he was a, a really great guy. This one opens up really nice with orange and cinnamon and then features those notes I talked about before as it dries down. Your tobacco, your bits of spice like cumin and incense as well. There are woods and leather in the base, though they're not 
super loud, super strong. And the cumin here does not come across like body odor, thankfully. So it doesn't really have a negative effect on the fragrance. Sometimes cumin, if it's used a certain kind of way, it can come across animalic or sweaty or like I said, body odor, but you don't have that issue here. Again, another great fall and wintertime fragrance, and like the name says, it's good for nighttime use. And another positive with Wanted by Night is it has very good performance for me as well. So, one that cuts right through the cold. Number five, Azaro Wanted by Night. We are in the top four, and number four is Paco Rabanne One Million Lucky. This one has hazelnut, ozonic notes, plum, and honey. As some of the notes in the fragrance, and it's not really a surprise to see this in the top four. One Million Lucky is a very popular fragrance. And since I reviewed this. It's made multiple lists and I've talked about it a bunch of different times. It's one that my wife really likes. It's one that I've gotten a lot of compliments from. It's an easy to wear, versatile scent. It's a fresh fragrance, but it's sweet at the same time. And it's one that does smell a little bit unique as far as designer fragrances go. There aren't too many designer fragrances out there that you're gonna see with all those gourmand notes, your hazelnut, your plum, your honey, uh, that come across fresh. A lot of times fragrances like that are gonna come across very rich and dense and heavy, but One Million Lucky doesn't. It's a fragrance that has extreme versatility. You can use it year round. Uh, again, like I said, has a big compliment factor and it's inoffensive. Almost everybody out there is gonna think it smells really nice. Now, of course, people that are way into niche fragrances, indie fragrances, artisan fragrances, or atars, things like that, are going to turn their nose up at One Million Lucky. But the fact of the matter is, as an everyday wear kind of fragrance, One Million Lucky kills it. It's a really solid release from Paco Rabanne, and on top of all that stuff I just said, it has above average longevity and projection as well. So it makes total sense to me that that one is in the top four. All right, we're at the top three. If you haven't thought of what these three fragrances are yet, when I tell you what they are, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then at the same time, you're gonna hit your head and groan and be like, oh God. So here we go, number three, Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum. Bergamot, Amberwood, Apple, Ginger, and Sage. Some of the notes in this fragrance. And this was the follow-up, of course, to Y Eau de Toilette, which in my opinion is a great compliment getting office safe kind of fragrance. Y Eau de Parfum is even more popular than Y Eau de Toilette. This does get hated on as being a blue fragrance. And I get it. Blue fragrances are everywhere. Every brand is releasing their own blue fragrance. Some brands releasing multiple blue fragrances like Yves Saint Laurent. And there's this kind of backlash from the fragrance community, people who are sick of seeing blue fragrances. They're sick of seeing extremely versatile, compliment getting, easy to wear fragrances. They're, they're sick of that. And they want something more unique. And why Eau de Parfum gets hate? Because it is a blue fragrance. All that being said, even though I have tons of niche fragrances, indie fragrances, I mean a lot more stuff than what you see back here, I love Y Eau de Parfum. I think it's a wonderful fragrance if you want something that is hyper versatile, that's gonna pull you a ton of compliments potentially, that you can use day or night, that you can use pretty much year round, doesn't matter when it is, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, you can make use of Y Eau de Parfum, that you can wear casually, that you can wear to the office, that you can wear in a suit, that you can wear on a date. I mean, you can do pretty much anything with Y Eau de Parfum and people are gonna like it. It's got a really nice ginger apple bergamot opening. Of course, it has amberwood, a good amount of amberwood. And I just talked about that with Aqua de Joe Absolu, so you already know what that is. It's also got sage and juniper in there, some sweetness from Tonka. I mean, it's a solid fragrance. I've reviewed this one in the past. I know it gets hated on. I know it has a lot of haters and detractors out there and I get it, I do, but I still like it. So that's number three. What could number two be? Chanel Blue de Chanel Parfum. Yes, another blue fragrance. Guess what this one also has? Blue de Chanel Parfum, it's got amber wood. It also has lavender, cedar, sandalwood, and lemon zest. I really can't overstate to you guys how much amber wood has blown up in the past year or two. At first everyone was like, oh, Ambroxan, Ambroxan's everywhere. Now Amberwood is everywhere. It's like the new trendy Ambroxan. Blue de Chanel Parfum is priced right there with Sauvage Parfum. It's $150 for 100 milliliter size. So this one is going to be more expensive than Y Eau de Parfum because Y Eau de Parfum you can find discounted. Now it's not discounted heavily, but you can find it pretty consistently for about half the price 
of Bleu de Chanel Parfum. Bleu de Chanel Parfum is essentially a darker, richer take on the Bleu de Chanel DNA. It does come across like a little bit of a smoother take on that DNA. And like Y Eau de Parfum before it, it's another hyper versatile fragrance. It's the type of scent that most everybody is going to smell and say, wow, that smells really nice. What is that? I have only ever covered Bleu de Chanel Parfum in one smell and rate video. I have not reviewed it, so maybe I'll get that done sometime soon. And number two though, Bleu de Chanel Parfum. So that takes us to number one, the most popular fragrance of 2018. What could it be? We've already said Y de Parfum, Bleu de Chanel Parfum, Aqua de Joe Absolu, One Million Lucky. There's some heavy hitters that we've already covered. What could it be? Oh, that's right. Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Yes, Sauvage. Vanilla, Lavender, Bergamot, Sichuan Pepper, and Ambroxan, some of the notes. Yes, uh, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum, kind of filling out the blue fragrance trifecta right at the top. And those really are kind of the biggest blue fragrances, aren't they? Why Blue de Chanel and Sauvage? It's like the, the triangle of blue fragrances. Illuminati confirmed. Once you hit the dry down, Sauvage Eau de Toilette and Sauvage Eau de Parfum are quite similar. There's not an enormous difference between the two once the fragrance has dried down. The Eau de Parfum is a little bit darker, a little bit richer, and has more sweetness from the vanilla that's utilized in the Eau de Parfum. And that uh, darker, richer, you know, less uh, in your face kind of approach to the DNA seems to be a prerequisite for these blue fragrances when they go for an Eau de Parfum and then a Parfum afterwards. So you have the Eau de Toilette, which is usually the one that's the loudest, except for why Eau de Toilette. And then you have the Eau de Parfum, where they make it richer, a little bit darker, maybe a little sweeter. And then you get the Parfum, and then they just take it even further. The Ambroxan in the Eau de Parfum is still strong, just not as in your face as in the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette has that big punch of an almost metallic Ambroxan. The Eau de Toilette is also a little bit stronger than the Eau de Parfum off my skin, though Sauvage Eau de Parfum is still not a weak fragrance at all. Like the last two scents, Y Eau de Parfum and Bleu de Chanel Parfum, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum, that's a lot of parfums, is hyper versatile, big compliment getter, easy to pull off, and most everyone you run into is gonna really like it. Of course, there will be some people that don't, but for the most part, Dior Sauvage is so popular because so many people love it. And it was the most popular men's release of 2018, according to the Fragrantica community. So fragrance community, if you don't agree with this list, it's your own doing. It's not my fault, it's your fault. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Top 10 most popular men's releases 2018. It's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Usually I go this way. Today I'm gonna go this way just to throw you off. See you guys.